Hi everyone, my name is Yashu Leia, and this is an intro to PaperJS, the graphics and animation library. I'll be discussing basic items, event handlers, and uh, creating engaging animations. Let's get started. Okay, so what is PaperJS? It's a vector graphics JavaScript framework, and it runs on top of the HTML canvas element. Uh, it was developed in 2011 and 12. Uh, how to get started? So it's actually quite easy. You can just npm install the um, paper uh, node module and put it as a script tag in your HTML. And then you'll see the second script tag there. Uh, it's type paper script. Now that's just an extension, basic extension of JavaScript. It includes all the constructor functions and uh, special features of paper.js. And the source there is just your, uh, where you put your JavaScript. And you'll see the can canvas attribute there links to, it's the same ID as the canvas element that's in the body of your HTML. OK, so I mentioned it's a vector graphics library. Uh, so remind me, what is a vector again? Well, it's a quantity that has a direction and a magnitude. And um, it's, it has to do with relative space between two points. Uh, it can be described either as a point uh, of x and y coordinates, or as the definition uh, suggests, it can be um, described as an angle and a length. Why are vectors so cool? Well, it allows for uh, drier code, essentially. Imagine you have an array of points or symbols or what have you, and it's really easy with a vector to iterate through the whole group and change them all in one go. Just want to give a very brief overview of all the different types of items uh, that you have in PaperJS. Uh, you can basically break them down into two uh, groups. There's the collection objects, uh, layers and groups, and then there are individual objects that you add to your project. Uh, there's one project per canvas element, and you can have as many layers and groups as uh, you want. Your first layer is considered, or it's whatever is the active layer you're working on, uh, the first layer is going to be the active layer by default. And as soon as you start adding items, whether it's paths, paths are just lines or basic shapes like circles, uh, rasters, just think images, and symbols, I'll get into both of those later. Uh, as soon as you start adding items, they are automatically pushed into the array, uh, your active layer array. All right, moving on to rasters. These are a really dry method for drawing images onto your canvas elements. So all you need is to have just a normal image tag in your HTML. It has an ID. And you put that ID into your raster constructor function. And voila, you have your canvas rendered onto, or sorry, your image rendered onto your canvas. And you can then scale it or reposition it how you like. Just uh, for some context, I'm throwing some code that I, I worked with before discovering PaperJS, uh, working directly with JavaScript and uh, the canvas element. It takes a lot more lines of code to have the same effect. Symbols. You can think of symbols like class objects. So you can make as many instances of symbols as you want. And you can change them individually. Uh, but you can also change every single instance by changing the symbol.definition property. So you can change their position, uh, whether they rotate or not, their color. Uh, so it's a very powerful way. And then, of course, the class object is just one uh, one, you know, it's stored in one place and can be referenced to, so it's good for storage as well. Uh, you see the three steps there in the code. You create a symbol uh, with the constructor function and inputting any item that you'd like, uh, whether it's a raster or a basic path. And then uh, you place instances wherever you want uh, onto, and um, in the code there, it's at a random point on the screen, on the view size. And then you can change your definition however you like to change every single instance. Moving on to event handler functions. These actually look quite a bit like uh, the functions uh, in jQuery. Uh, you have on mouse down, on mouse up, 
on mouse drag and on frame, both of which fire 60 times per second. You, uh, there is a basic uh, an on mouse drag function that you'll see uh, in, in the first demo I have for you. And also a, a, descript a visual description, essentially. Every time the on drag function fires, it, you have the event.point and the previous event.delta. So like this would be one fire, this would be another fire, and the delta. This is a third and the delta. Uh, the event object that's passed into the event handlers is also uh, has some special properties to it. Uh, you have event.count, which uh, for the onFrame method counts which frame you're on. So that's very handy. You'll see that in another demo I have. Event, and then I just briefly touched on event.point, which is the point at which uh, the method is fired, whether it's mouse down, mouse up, mouse drag, and event.delta, which is a vector uh, describing the difference uh, between the previous time the event fired and the current time. All right, time for some demos. Let's get started. Uh, as promised, here's the, the first demo, a very basic on mouse drag function on the circle object. And this is uh, just a playground that you can work with in the paper.js uh, website. It's a fantastic website. Uh, so yeah, as you can see, it is following my cursor. And you know, if you go really slowly, you can see the console log of the vector there. Uh, it's like zeros and ones. If you go really fast, you can see it's going to be a whole bunch of different values. All right, but that's you know a little too simple. Let's move on. And this second one is a really cool paintbrush tool. Now I can't take credit for it. It's in the docs, uh, which is filled. Uh, the docs are really filled with examples. Highly recommend them. So it's not just a basic drawing tool. You know, it starts the line, mouse down, ends it, mouse up. You can see it's a little wavy, right? So let me try, that's a, you know, very slow line. Let's try a really fast one. And look at the difference there. Not only is the uh, color randomly changing, but something's going on here, right? And this is, again, because of the event.delta, that vector property. So uh, you see on line 26, you have event.delta. Uh, it's actually half of event.delta. And then that step function, or the, sorry, the variable, is being added to and subtracted from there on line 29 and 30. Uh, added and subtracted from the event.middle point. So like visually, say that's the middle point. It's being added to and subtracted from. So uh, a lot the the uh, faster you move your mouse, the larger the vector, the larger the change in, dis in uh, distance and event.delta property, and the larger uh, the, or the, the wider your stroke of your line is. All right, but I've spent too much time on that one. This is the main event, and I'll just restart it a few times just to get a sense of what's going on. All right, so let's look at the code, what's going on. This demo is demoing raster objects uh, that are just, again, just images that are in my HTML. And then uh, symbols. And those symbols are not just uh, symbols of the raster object. I actually, if, if that were the case, they would be square. Um, I, in order to get the circular effect, I grouped it with just a, a, a plain uh, circle path, and then was able to crop the raster image uh, based on the boundary of that circle. And then uh, you see, so let's actually, you have the code right there of the onFrame function, and how it's dependent on the, um, the count of the frame, uh, different things happen. So the very beginning, the size of the symbols is going to change uh, because I changed the screen size. So the very beginning, the first 30 frames, uh, you have every frame uh, a new symbol being added to the screen. And every fifth frame uh, is a blue symbol, just so you know. And then uh, they start rotating at uh, frame 20. And that I achieve, again, just by altering the definition here on lines 60 and 61. 
So by two lines, I'm changing uh, how every single, uh, every single symbol rotates. And then starting on uh, the 40th frame, uh, I assign, so you see the, the movement is random, and that starts on the 40th frame. I assign a, a vector, a random vector, uh, an x and a y value between uh, negative 5 and positive 5. And then those next 20 frames, I add that vector to the position of each symbol. So they each have a different vector. They each go in a different direction. Then 20 frames passes, and I assign a new vector. So that's how I get the randomization. And then also worth noting, of course, you see in the background this raster image. Its uh, opacity is being added to or decreasing as time goes on. Unfortunately, that's all the time I have. Um, you can see this code. It's going to be on my GitHub repo. And I hope this talk has encouraged you all to take a look at PaperJS's documentation. You won't be disappointed. Thank you very much. <laughs>